Well, it's just my luck. I released a Kaspersky vs. Bitdefender video comparing the free versions, and now we have a new Kaspersky free AV. But don't worry, most of what you saw in that video is still very relevant because this is mostly a UI change. They have added System Watcher, which we'll take a look at, but there are some interesting things I wanted to see here. The first thing is, now under protection, you don't have any settings. This is a bit of a bummer because I kind of like the ability to change some of these settings, but it looks like Kaspersky is going more the Bitdefender route when it comes to their free AV. The downside is you can no longer mess with the file antivirus settings. The good news, however, is that you now have System Watcher, Network Attack Blocker, a couple of modules being added in here, and System Watcher especially is a big addition because it kind of allows you to roll back in case something malicious does happen to your system. So in order to test that out, I have a really nice malware sample here. I don't want to spoil anything. Let's just say it's going to be fun. So I'm not doing the traditional type of review that I usually do. If you want to see that, please check out my Kaspersky vs. Bitdefender video. It covers a lot of stuff, including the signatures and all that. But in this video, I'll just show you something really cool, and we'll get to check out the new components of Kaspersky's new product. So here we go. Just kidding. As you have rightfully noticed, the file is not instantly blocked by Kaspersky Free. I tested this before I actually record it to make sure that doesn't happen. Here's uh, another file, and there's another one. What is happening here? Ah, oh, the name just changed. Oh, what is this? <laughs> Come on, you've got to be loving it if you're a fan of classic viruses and stuff. Seems Kaspersky has deleted one of them. But the battle, I guess, is going to continue. Let's grab some process exploration tools. Did I just say process exploration tools? <laughs> That's so funny. I'm just going to grab process hacker, I think. Here's the parent process, just kidding.exe, and it seems to be taking up a lot of memory. And then it seems to be spawning a lot of child process creating um, the stuff. And, oh, look at that. <laughs> look at how many random files we have on the desktop now. I'm going to try to name all of these. Fiwichi1933. Uh, Yukek1769. Kojikson7. Uh, Sounds like some Norwegian names, Arabic and Norwegian names. But you kind of get an idea of what's happening now. Let's see if Kaspersky can deal with this. The reason I picked this sample for this test is because this is a classic example of where the system watcher is going to come and play. And as you can see, it already has. We are detecting some of this stuff now after the malicious behavior happened and started recreating a bunch of copies of itself. The original process still seems intact. Kaspersky still hasn't gotten that, but it's trying to block a lot of these other processes that are being spawned. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with the advanced disinfection process and we'll restart the system and see if uh, the malware is successfully killed or if we end up with uh, a million copies of Stib Vision 2.3. <laughs> well, guess what? After the advanced disinfection, the system rebooted successfully and we don't have any malware process anymore. Everything is just as you would expect. We don't have any Skavujil or Zuzek 76 on our desktop, so that's nice. As an interesting side note, I've also conducted a lot of ransomware experiments on the system, and so far Kaspersky hasn't let me down. I'm going to do a really short one now for you to see. So let me just drag in, say, an FUD ransomware sample, or something that basically just modifies documents in a malicious manner. Let's just drag this in. Now we'll wait and see if any of our documents or pictures are actually encrypted. And that should be an interesting test as well. The ransomware kind of got stuck with high resource usage from both it and Kaspersky. So I'm pretty sure that there was some sort of conflict going on when it was trying to encrypt these files. Either way, our files are completely safe. As you can see, everything is still in here. Pretty good result for Kaspersky Free AV. I'm really happy with the way this product works. It's very good protection for free. The only thing I'm a bit disappointed by is that 
they don't have the settings accessible anymore, which I guess is okay. I mean, you still have these settings, so you can change update settings, you can change threats and exclusions, you just cannot mess with any of the protection settings, which I think is fine. I mean, if you want these, you can obviously pay for the internet security suite. But this version of the free AV actually has more features than the previous version. Pretty much most of the important features of the paid suite as well. I would definitely recommend it over most of the free AVs out there right now. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and share if you did and subscribe to the PC Security channel. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.